Why is a wedge like an inclined plane? A knife is one example of a wedge. Look carefully at the sharp edge of a kitchen knife. It looks like two inclined planes put back to back. As the knife blade moves down through food, the wedge pushes the pieces apart. A hatchet or axe is another example of a wedge. Wedges are also used to split wood. In this case the flat end of an axe is often used to drive the wedge into the end of a log. Which is then forced apart. Wedges are inefficient machines because there is usually a large amount of friction between the wedge and the material. Which leads to increased temperature of both the material and wedge, and thus heat transfer. Why is a wedge like an inclined plane? A knife is one example of a wedge. Look carefully at the sharp edge of a kitchen knife. It looks like two inclined planes put back to back. As the knife blade moves down through food, the wedge pushes the pieces apart. A hatchet or axe is another example of a wedge. Wedges are also used to split wood. In this case the flat end of an axe is often used to drive the wedge into the end of a log. Which is then forced apart. Wedges are inefficient machines because there is usually a large amount of friction between the wedge and the material. Which leads to increased temperature of both the material and wedge, and thus heat transfer. What type of simple machine is a screw? You can think of a screw as an inclined plane wrapped around an axle. The ancient Greeks used a screw to lift water. Screws and bolts are also used to fasten two pieces of wood, plastic, or metal together. Screws have a large mechanical advantage, and thus the distance the screw thread moves. In its circular motion is much larger than the distance the screw moves into the material. Therefore the force the screw or bolt exerts to hold the material. Together is large in comparison to the torque used to turn the screw. Screws and bolts are also inefficient machines because of the friction between the screw and material. Or between the metal of the bolt and nut. What type of simple machine is a screw? You can think of a screw as an inclined plane wrapped around an axle. The ancient Greeks used a screw to lift water. Screws and bolts are also used to fasten two pieces of wood, plastic, or metal together. Screws have a large mechanical advantage, and thus the distance the screw thread moves. In its circular motion is much larger than the distance the screw moves into the material. Therefore the force the screw or bolt exerts to hold the material. Together is large in comparison to the torque used to turn the screw. 
Screws and bolts are also inefficient machines because of the friction between the screw and material. Or between the metal of the bolt and nut. How can athletes use angular momentum? Let's explore two different sports. In platform diving a person pushes off the tower. And thus the platform exerts a force on her, Newton's third law. But if she isn't standing straight up, the force also exerts a torque on her, and starts her rotating. If she pulls her arms and legs in, then her mass is closer to her axis of rotation. And her speed of rotation increases. To slow this rotation, she can extend her arms and legs. With good timing, she can hit the water with a bare minimum of rotation. Consider a figure skater. She can start spinning on the point of one skate by pushing on the ice with the second skate. Again, the force of the ice exerts a torque, and so her rotational speed increases. She can extend her arms to slow the rotation. Or pull them in as close as possible to attain the highest spin rate. How large is the gravitational field at that altitude? Its distance from Earth's center is about 6.7 x 106 m, so g equals 8.9 n slash kg. That's not much different than at Earth's surface. The Moon is 384 x 106 m from the center of Earth. At that distance g equals 0.0027 n slash kg. So the force of Earth's gravity on the same kilogram of meat would be only three thousandths of a newton. What type of simple machine is a screw? You can think of a screw as an inclined plane wrapped around an axle. The ancient Greeks used a screw to lift water. Screws and bolts are also used to fasten two pieces of wood, plastic, or metal together. Screws have a large mechanical advantage, and thus the distance the screw thread moves in its circular motion is much larger than the distance the screw moves into the material. Therefore the force the screw or bolt exerts to hold the material together is large in comparison to the torque used to turn the screw. Screws and bolts are also inefficient machines because of the friction between the screw and material or between the metal of the bolt and nut. What plays the role of force in rotation? You have had experiences that illustrate how torque works. Suppose you want to push open a door that rotates about its hinges. You know that the speed with which the door opens depends on how hard you push. It also depends on how far from the hinges you push the farther the faster. 
It also depends on the angle at which you push. Pushing at a right angle to the door is much more effective than pushing at a smaller or larger angle. If you push at a right angle, then torque equals the force times the distance from the axis of rotation. With nothing to technically push against in space, it seems odd that rockets could accelerate in space. The explanation is that the force of the combusting rocket fuel itself pushes the rocket, accelerating it forward. What are the limitations on simple machines? Simple machines must, like everything else, obey the law of conservation of energy. That means that the work done on the machine equals the work the machine does plus. The heat the machine puts out because friction has increased its thermal energy. Some machines are highly efficient, meaning input and output work are almost the same. While others put out only a fraction of the work put in. The drawing on page 74 shows a simple machine where the machine has warmed up. That means its thermal energy has increased. It is now hotter than its surroundings, so it transmits heat to its surroundings. Which are not shown on this diagram. The output work of the machine is smaller than the work put into it. That means that for the same input force, the output force is reduced by an inefficient machine. What plays the role of momentum in rotational motion? The angular momentum of a rotating object is proportional to the product of its moment of inertia and its angular velocity. If there are no external torques on the object, then its angular momentum does not change. An object with linear momentum that has no external forces on it cannot change its mass. So its velocity is constant. But a rotating object can change its moment of inertia, so. Even without external torques, its rotational speed can be changed. Does momentum apply to objects that rotate? Quantities that describe rotation are similar to but different than those that describe straight line motion. Position is replaced by angle, velocity by angular rotation. Acceleration by angular acceleration. Force is replaced by torque. What are the sources and uses of energy in the United States? The tables below explain how much energy the United States uses per source and where the energy is used. The United States used 99.2 quads of energy in 2009, where each quad equals 1000 billion BTUs. Electrical generation, 39.97 quads, is very inefficient. 
only 31.5% of the energy from the source, coal, natural gas. Oil, nuclear, is transformed into electrical energy. The transportation industry is also wasteful in terms of energy. With 75% of the energy, mostly petroleum, it uses being wasted as heat. What are the types of simple machines? There are four major groups of simple machines, levers, including wheels and axles. Pulleys, including gears, and the inclined plane, including wedges and screws. How is the gravitational field related to force? As was described above, the force of gravity on an object is equal to the object's mass times the gravitational field strength, expressed as F equals mg. Thus if you have a mass of 70 kilograms, 154 pounds, the force of gravity on you is 686 newtons. Mass has been defined both in terms of acceleration and gravitational force. How does gravity cause tides? As someone who lives near an ocean will know, there are two high tides and two low tides each day. They're not at the same time each day, but depend on the phase of the moon. The heights of the tides vary over the seasons as well. What are some typical power outputs? The following table was adapted from Wikipedia's entry on orders of magnitude, power. Retrieved on November 13, 2009. Unit example asterisk femtowatt, 10 to 15 watt, 10 FW, approximate lower limit of power. Reception of digital cell phones picowatt, 10 to 12 watt, 1 PW. Average power consumption of a human cell microwatt. 10 to 6 watt, 1 carat W, approximate consumption of a quartz wristwatch milliwatt, 10 to 3 watt. 5 to 10 MW, laser in a DVD player watt 20 to 40 W, approximate power consumption of the human brain. 70 to 100 W, Approximate basal metabolic rate used by the human body 5 to 253 W, per capita average power. Use of the world in 2001 500 W, power output of a person working hard physically 909 W, peak output power of a healthy human. Non-athlete, during a 30 second cycle sprint kilowatt, 103 watts, I. 366 kilowatts, power received from the sun at Earth's orbit by 1 square meter up. To 2 kilowatts, approximate short time power output of sprinting professional cyclists. 1 kilowatt to 2 kilowatts, rate of heat output of a domestic electric tea kettle too. 4 kilowatts, 
average power consumption per person in the United States as of 2009 40 kilowatts to 200 kilowatts, approximate. Range of power output of typical automobiles megawatt, 106 watts, 1 1.5 MW, peak power output of a wind. Turbine 2.5 MW, peak power output of a blue whale 3 MW, mechanical power output of a diesel locomotive. 16 MW, rate at which a typical gasoline pump transfers chemical energy to a vehicle 140 MW, average power. Consumption of a Boeing 747 Jumbo Jet 200 to 500 MW, electrical power output of a typical nuclear power plant gigawatt. 109 watts, 2.074 GW, peak power generation of Hoover Dam 4.116 GW, installed capacity the World's largest coal-fired power plant 18.3 GW, current electrical power generation of China's Three Gorges Dam. The world's largest hydroelectric power plant terawatt, 1,012 watts. 3.34 TW, average total power consumption of the United States in 2005 50 to 200 TW, rate of heat energy release by a hurricane petawatt. 1,015 watts, 4 PW, estimated total heat flux transported by Earth's atmosphere and ocean away from the equator. Towards the poles 174.0 PW, total power received by Earth from the Sun Yadawatt, 1,024 watts, 384. Are machines with mechanical advantage equal to one useful? They are because they change the direction the force is exerted. Which often makes it easier for the person to exert that force. How did Einstein describe the gravitational field? Einstein in his general theory of relativity showed that the gravitational field was actually a distortion of space-time caused by the mass of the object. Because space-time has four dimensions that are very difficult to visualize. The distortion is best seen with a two-dimensional model. Often the model consists of a rubber sheet in which a bowling ball is placed, see illustration on page 39. The sheet is pulled down by the ball, which represents the sun. Earth is a tiny ball that is placed on the sheet and given a push perpendicular to the direction of the sun. This ball orbits the sun a few times until friction causes it to speed up and spiral into the sun. In the words of physicist John Wheeler, space-time grips mass, telling it how to move. Mass grips space-time, telling it how to curve. Are these the same? Mass defined as m equals fnit slash a is called inertial mass. Mass defined as m equals f gravitation slash g is called gravitational mass. Many physicists, starting with the Hungarian Baron von Eovos, 
have done experiments to determine if the two kinds of mass are equal and if they are the same for all materials. Recent experiments have shown that if they are different, the difference is only one part in 1015. Furthermore, Einstein's general theory of relativity explains that they are identical and calls this fact the principle of equivalence between gravitation and acceleration. In other words, the laws of physics in an accelerating reference frame or a gravitating frame are indistinguishable. You can't tell the difference between falling or being acted on by gravity. What is an inclined plane? A ramp is an example of an inclined plane. Instead of lifting an object to the height at the end of the ramp, you move it a much longer distance on the surface of the ramp, but it requires much less force. So, the ramp has a larger output force than an input force, it has a mechanical advantage greater than 1. That is, ma equals foutput slash finput equals, length of ramp, slash, height of ramp. According to the Americans with Disabilities Act a wheelchair ramp should have a maximum increase in height of 1 for every 12 length of the ramp. The act says that the maximum rise should be 2 minus a half, so the ramp must be 30 long. The input work is finput XL, where L is the length of the ramp. The output work is foutput XD, where D is the rise and foutput is the weight of the person plus wheelchair. If there is no sliding or rolling friction, then finput XL equals foutput XD. The mechanical advantage is L slash D. So finput equals foutput slash ma and the force needed to push a wheelchair up the ramp is given by finput equals foutput slash L slash D. If the weight of the person plus the wheelchair is 200 pounds, then the force needed to push the person up the ramp is finput equals 200 pounds slash 3072.5 equals 17 pounds. Look at the cutting edge of a scissors. It's an inclined plane where the input is the force and motion of the closing blades and the output is the outward movement of the paper after it is cut. What does sustainable energy mean? The amount of fossil fuels is limited. There have been major advances in discovering oil and extracting more from existing reservoirs. As well as recent advances in obtaining natural gas and oil from shale. But these sources, as well as coal and uranium, are not being replaced. Sustainable energy sources, primarily wind, water, and solar energy, ultimately receive their energy from the sun, and therefore will be available for billions of years. The present use of these sources is minimal. There are many difficulties in increasing their use. Wind power is highly variable. Water energy from traditional dams and reservoirs causes environmental problems.
energy from waves and tides has yet to be developed widely. Solar energy can be directly converted to electricity using photovoltaic cells. But these cells, at least at present, are inefficient and costly. Large solar farms exist, at which solar energy heats a fluid so it can boil water to use with steam turbines driving electrical generators. An additional problem in increasing the use of many of these sources is that they require the use of very rare materials, which are both costly and not easily obtained. Nevertheless, recent analyses suggest that a combination of nuclear, wind, water, and solar energy could replace most of the use of coal and oil for electric energy production. Why is a wedge like an inclined plane? A knife is one example of a wedge. Look carefully at the sharp edge of a kitchen knife. It looks like two inclined planes put back to back. As the knife blade moves down through food, the wedge pushes the pieces apart. A hatchet or axe is another example of a wedge. Wedges are also used to split wood. In this case the flat end of an axe is often used to drive the wedge into the end of a log. Which is then forced apart. Wedges are inefficient machines because there is usually a large amount of friction between the wedge and the material. Which leads to increased temperature of both the material and wedge and thus heat transfer. What are other examples of the conservation of momentum? If there is only one object in the system, then with no external forces Newton's second law says that its velocity will not change. Conservation of momentum also says that its momentum won't change. If the momentum was zero, it will remain zero. If you shoot a rifle or shotgun you are often told to hold the gun tightly against your shoulder. What's the physics explanation for this admonition? When the gun is fired the bullet's momentum changes. Its new momentum is in the forward direction. So, AC according to the law of conservation of momentum the gun must gain momentum. In the opposite direction. It will recoil. If the gun isn't held tightly to your shoulder its mass is relatively small, and so its recoil velocity will be large. When it hits your shoulder it could cause injury. If, on the other hand, the rifle is tight against your shoulder, then the mass is the mass of the rifle and your body. The recoil velocity will be much smaller. Momentum backward. With no external forces on the rocket gas system. The rocket's momentum must increase in the forward direction. It will speed up. When the rocket is on the launch pad there is an external force on it, the force of gravity.
what's the strength of gravitational fields of other astronomical objects? This table shows the properties of the Sun, planets, and Earth's moon. It also shows the strength of the Sun's gravitational field at each planet. And the strength of the planet's gravitational fields at their surfaces. The Sun and Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus, and Neptune are gaseous and have no solid surfaces. Can the axis of rotation change? A toy gyroscope contains a rotating wheel. If you put it on a stand the axis moves in a circle. Why? The gravitational force pulls down on the center of mass of the wheel. Thus the gyroscope begins to rotate downward. The effect of this new torque is to cause the axis to change direction. Precession is also important for bicycles and motorcycles. If the cycle starts to tip to the right, then the rotating front wheel's axis will rotate. And the wheel will turn to the right, helping to keep the cycle from tipping over. How can that be useful? It's because the distance moved, output distance, is larger than what you move, input distance. And, therefore, the output speed is also greater. A baseball bat, tennis racket, and golf club can be considered simple. Machines in which high speed of the end of the implement is desired. What happens to the momentum of the ball and you and the chair all together? As long as external forces are zero or small, then in any interaction the momentum of the system. In this case the ball, you, and the chair will be constant. This result is called the conservation of momentum. The sum of the decrease in momentum of the ball and the increase in momentum of you and the chair will be zero. How does Einstein's special theory of relativity affect momentum? The same factor, y, that affected distance and time, affects momentum in the same way, that is relativistic momentum is ymv. Gamma is 1 at slow speeds and becomes large only when the velocity is near the speed of light. How can energy be transferred? Any energy transfer involves a source, whose energy is reduced. A means of transferring the energy, and an energy receiver, whose energy is increased. It's convenient to use a diagram to keep track of the source, the transfer, and the receiver, 
see pages 61 to 62. For example, if a moving pool ball collides with another ball it can transfer all or part of its kinetic energy to the other ball. Transfer of energy by this kind of mechanical interaction is called work. The moving ball does work on the stationary ball and its kinetic energy is reduced. The kinetic energy of the stationary ball is increased by the work done on it. When a slingshot does work on the stone, its stored elastic energy decreases and the kinetic energy of the stone increases. When you throw a ball your stored chemical energy is reduced. Work is done on the ball, and the ball's kinetic energy is increased. Other methods of transferring energy that do not involve work will be discussed later. How can the rocket take off? Now the momentum of the gas and rocket isn't conserved, but still the impulse the rocket gives. The gas in pushing it backward is equal and opposite to the impulse the gas gives the rocket. Thus the rocket rises, just more slowly than it would if there were no gravity. What causes the tides? The moon's gravitational field exerts a force on the water. Because the field and force depend on distance. The force on the water closest to the moon is strongest. The force on earth is weaker and the force on the water on the far side of Earth is smallest. So the water nearest the moon is pulled toward it, and Earth is pulled toward the moon more strongly than the water farthest from the moon. For that reason there is a tidal bulge in the water near the moon, and another on the far side. The bulges, which are the high tides, are not directly under the moon because Earth's rotation drags the water along with it. Because the day is shorter than the lunar month. The high tides actually come about two hours before the moon is overhead. Tides also vary greatly with location. The largest tidal variations occur in the Bay of Fundy between the Canadian provinces of Nova Scotia and New Brunswick. Where the largest recorded range was 17 meters, or almost 56 feet. There have been many proposals to put a dam across the bay and use the tides to generate electricity. But environmental concerns have blocked construction in that bay. The sun also affects the tides, but much less than the moon. When the sun, earth, and the moon are aligned, which happens at both full and new moons, the tides are especially high. How does this very small gravitational field keep the moon in its orbit? The answer, of course, is that the moon has a large mass. 7.2 x 1022 kg, and so the force on it is 2.0 x 1020 n. When we explore orbits later we'll use this result.
How can a machine with a mechanical advantage less than or equal to 1 be useful? If a simple machine has a mechanical advantage less than 1 then you exert a larger force on it than it puts on whatever object it contacts. The output force is less than the input force. What is energy? An object with energy can change itself or its environment. That's a pretty abstract definition. Let's explore some of the many ways an object can have energy and what changes it can cause. A speeding car has energy think what damage it can do if it hits a wall or another car. The energy of motion is called kinetic energy. A rotating wheel also has energy if you try to stop a spinning bicycle wheel with your hand, it may hurt you. This kind of energy is called rotational kinetic energy. A compressed spring or a stretched rubber band can cause a stone to move. The energy in the squeezed spring or stretched band is called elastic energy. There are a variety of other forms of energy that are stored in a material. The random motion of the atoms that make up the material means that the atoms have kinetic energy. A measure of the amount of the kinetic energy in the random motion of the atoms is called temperature. The more energy, the higher the temperature. Kinetic energy in the random motion of atoms in a material is called thermal energy. If you charge or discharge a battery, like the one in your cell phone, you change the chemical composition of the battery materials. When you charge it you increase its chemical energy. You can also increase the chemical energy of your body by eating. Even mass has stored energy splitting the nucleus of a uranium atom results. In elements that have smaller mass but a large amount of kinetic energy. Why does the gravitational field depend on the distance from its center? This is not an easy question to answer. Newton recognized the problem and had to develop a new mathematics, the integral calculus, to solve it. His argument, simplified, can be illustrated with a wooden button. Hold it at arm's length in front of a window so you can see a tree. Note how much area the button covers on the tree. According to Newton, assuming that the button and tree were made of the same material, the force of attraction of the button on you is exactly the same as that of the part of the tree the button covers. The reason is that the effect of the button being closer is balanced by the much larger mass of the International Space Station orbits at about 320 kilometers above Earth's surface. Does the gravitational force also obey Newton's third law? How? All objects have gravitational fields surrounding them. 
so, just as the moon has a force exerted on it due to Earth's gravitational field. Earth has a force on it due to the moon's field. As a result, the moon does not orbit around Earth's center. But the moon and Earth orbit around a point roughly 2,900 kilometers from Earth's center. The Sun and other planets also exert gravitational forces on Earth, and Earth does on them. The gravitational fields of the planets, in particular Jupiter, cause the Sun to orbit around a point near its surface. Thus, if an observer on another planetary system studied the motion of the Sun carefully he or she could determine that planets were orbiting the Sun. This method has been used to detect well over 200 planets. Called exoplanets, or planetary systems and other stars. What's the strength of the gravitational field of Earth? Earth's mass is 5.9736 x 1024 kg and the gravitational constant is 6.673 x 10 to 11 nm2 kg2. At the surface of Earth, 6.4 x 106 m from the center, then g equals 9.8 n slash kg. Thus a kilogram of meat, for example experiences a gravitational force of 9.8 n toward Earth's center. Earth is huge. What are simple machines? Simple machines are devices that match human capabilities to do work to tasks that need to be done. They can reduce the force required or reduce the distance or direction an object must be moved. Because we will eventually run out of fossil fuels. We need to explore other, more sustainable forms of energy, such as solar power. Suppose you want to lift a heavy object. If you use a machine you will use your stored chemical energy to do work on the machine. The machine, in turn, does work on the object, which increases its energy. If the force is constant and in the direction of motion, then work is the product of force and distance moved, W equals FD. The mechanical advantage, MA, of a simple machine is the output force divided by the input force, FOUTPUT slash FINPUT equals MA. To make the output force larger than the input force you must choose a machine that has a mechanical advantage larger than 1. The drawing below illustrates the process. Note that you exert a small input force over a large distance. The machine exerts a larger output force over a smaller distance. Has Einstein's theory been tested? It has been tested in many ways. It is being used every day in adjusting the clocks in GPS satellites. They run faster because they are at high altitudes where the distortion of space-time is smaller. 
both the effects of special relativity, clocks running slower, and general relativity. Clocks running faster, must be used to keep the clocks running accurately. What plays the role of mass in rotation? Mass is defined as the net force on an object divided by its acceleration. By analogy, then, the property that takes the place of mass should be the torque divided by angular acceleration. The property is called rotational inertia or the moment of inertia. It depends not only on mass, but on how far the mass is from the axis of rotation. The further the mass is from the axis, the larger the moment of inertia. If you sit on a swiveling stool or chair while holding heavy weights, the further you extend your arms, the more difficult it is for someone to start you rotating. That is, it will require more torque to achieve the same angular acceleration. What is a lever? A lever is a bar that rotates around a fulcrum or pivot. The locations where the input and output forces are exerted relative to the location of the pivot determines the class of the lever. As shown on page 76, the width of the arrows illustrates the force while the length shows the distance moved. What is a lever? A lever is a bar that rotates around a fulcrum or pivot. The locations where the input and output forces are exerted relative to the location of the pivot determines the class of the lever. As shown on page 76, the width of the arrows illustrates the force while the length shows the distance moved. How efficient are levers? The only place where friction can occur with a lever is at the pivot point. So, as long as friction is minimal there, the lever can approach 100% efficiency. How efficient are levers? The only place where friction can occur with a lever is at the pivot point. So, as long as friction is minimal there, the lever can approach 100% efficiency. What are examples of levers? The first class lever shown above has a mechanical advantage greater than 1. What are examples of levers?
The first class lever shown above has a mechanical advantage greater than 1. How could you arrange the location of the pivot to make the mechanical advantage less than 1? Look closely at a pair of scissors. Note that you can adjust the mechanical advantage by moving the region of the scissors you are using to cut. How could you arrange the location of the pivot to make the mechanical advantage less than 1? Look closely at a pair of scissors. Note that you can adjust the mechanical advantage by moving the region of the scissors you are using to cut. Where would you put the material to be cut if more force is needed to make the cut? You would put it, nearer the pivot. On the other hand, if the material is easily cut, cutting near the tip of the blades provides enough force and speeds up the cutting. Where would you put the material to be cut if more force is needed to make the cut? You would put it, nearer the pivot. On the other hand, if the material is easily cut, cutting near the tip of the blades provides enough force and speeds up the cutting. What class lever is a kin or bottle opener? Locate the pivot point and compare to the three drawings above. Your forearm is a lever, with the elbow joint being the pivot. What class lever is a kin or bottle opener? Locate the pivot point and compare to the three drawings above. Your forearm is a lever, with the elbow joint being the pivot. Where does the bicep muscle attach? The attachment is close to the elbow, so the forearm is a third class lever. Where does the bicep muscle attach? The attachment is close to the elbow, so the forearm is a third class lever. Are other muscles and bones in your body so easily characterized?
most are not because tendons that transmit the force from the muscle to the bone are long and go through several bends. Consider sports equipment like baseball bats, tennis rackets, and golf clubs. They are often used as extensions of your arms. So the person plus the bat or club has to be examined together. But note that in every case the SYS TEM is a third class lever. Where a large distance moved, and therefore greater speed, is favored over an increased force. Are other muscles and bones in your body so easily characterized? Most are not because tendons that transmit the force from the muscle to the bone are long and go through several bends. Consider sports equipment like baseball bats, tennis rackets, and golf clubs. They are often used as extensions of your arms. So the person plus the bat or club has to be examined together. But note that in every case the SYS TEM is a third class lever. Where a large distance moved, and therefore greater speed, is favored over an increased force. How is a wheel and axle similar to a lever? What is a wheel and axle? It consists of a disc, the wheel, attached to a thin rod, the axle, so that the two rotate together. Typically the input force is applied to the outer edge of the wheel. And the output force is exerted on something, like a rope, attached to the outer edge of the axle. If the two forces are exerted in the same direction, then it is like a third class lever. If the two are in the opposite direction, for example, a person pushing down on one side of the wheel while a rope is pulled up on the other side, then it is like a first class lever. One may also have the input force exerted on the axle, in which case it is like a second class lever. Both the lever and the wheel and axle are really torque, not force multipliers. Recall that if the force is at right angles to the line from the axis of rotation to the point where the force is applied, then the torque is given by FR. How is a wheel and axle similar to a lever? What is a wheel and axle? It consists of a disc, the wheel, attached to a thin rod, the axle, so that the two rotate together. Typically the input force is applied to the outer edge of the wheel. And the output force is exerted on something, like a rope, attached to the outer edge of the axle. If the two forces are exerted in the same direction, then it is like a third class lever. If the two are in the opposite direction, for example, a person pushing down on one side of the wheel while a rope is pulled up on the other side, then it is like a first class lever. One may also have the input force exerted on the axle, in which case it is like a second class lever. Both the lever and the wheel and axle are really torque, 
not force, multipliers. Recall that if the force is at right angles to the line from the axis of rotation to the point where the force is applied, then the torque is given by FR. What are examples of wheels and axles? The screwdriver is one example the larger the diameter of the handle the greater the torque that can be applied to the screw. Many examples have a rope or chain wrapped around the axle. A sailing ship's steering wheel could be represented by either the left hand or the center drawing. Depending on whether the helmsman pushed down or pulled up on the edge of the wheel. The rope around the axle is connected to the rudder, which is then turned to the right or left. A similar device would be a device to lift a bucket from a well. The wheel is then replaced by a crank, but the operation of the device is exactly the same. Again, the crank can either be pulled up or pushed down to exert a force on the rope to pull the bucket up. The rear wheel of a bicycle can be thought of as two wheels on an axle. The large wheel has a rubber tire and exerts a backward force on. The road while the smaller wheel is the sprocket that the chain turns. The right hand drawing above shows that the force of the chain is larger than the wheel's force on the road. What are examples of wheels and axles? The screwdriver is one example the larger the diameter of the handle the greater the torque that can be applied to the screw. Many examples have a rope or chain wrapped around the axle. A sailing ship's steering wheel could be represented by either the left hand or the center drawing. Depending on whether the helmsman pushed down or pulled up on the edge of the wheel. The rope around the axle is connected to the rudder, which is then turned to the right or left. A similar device would be a device to lift a bucket from a well. The wheel is then replaced by a crank, but the operation of the device is exactly the same. Again, the crank can either be pulled up or pushed down to exert a force on the rope to pull the bucket up. The rear wheel of a bicycle can be thought of as two wheels on an axle. The large wheel has a rubber tire and exerts a backward force on. The road while the smaller wheel is the sprocket that the chain turns. The right hand drawing above shows that the force of the chain is larger than the wheel's force on the road. Are pulleys really simple machines? A fixed, or unmovable, single pulley can be considered a wheel and axle where both have the same radius. The mechanical advantage is one, but the pulley changes the direction of the force. If the pulley is allowed to move and the output force is exerted by the axle of the pulley, then the input force is shared by the two ends of the rope. If you fasten one end and pull up on the other, then you achieve a mechanical advantage of two. A combination of fixed and movable pulleys is called a block and tackle. 
Archimedes is said to have pulled a fully loaded ship using a block and tackle. Energy loss in a block and tackle comes from friction between the axle and its holder. As well as the stretching of the rope and rolling friction between the rope and pulley. Are pulleys really simple machines? A fixed, or unmovable, single pulley can be considered a wheel and axle where both have the same radius. The mechanical advantage is one, but the pulley changes the direction of the force. If the pulley is allowed to move and the output force is exerted by the axle of the pulley, then the input force is shared by the two ends of the rope. If you fasten one end and pull up on the other, then you achieve a mechanical advantage of two. A combination of fixed and movable pulleys is called a block and tackle. Archimedes is said to have pulled a fully loaded ship using a block and tackle. Energy loss in a block and tackle comes from friction between the axle and its holder. As well as the stretching of the rope and rolling friction between the rope and pulley. Are there other ways pulleys can be used? Two or more pulleys, on fixed axles, can be connected together with a belt. If the two pulleys are of different diameters, then the one with the smaller diameter will turn faster, and thus it can exert a larger torque. In your automobile one or more pulley and belt systems are used to deliver torques from the engine to the valve crankshaft. The water pump, the air conditioning compressor, and the alternator. Continuously variable automobile transmissions are used in a few modern cars to connect the engine to the drive shaft. The torque that can be delivered by an engine depends on the rotational speed. The torque is maximum at an intermediate speed. A transmission is designed to allow the engine to revolve at a speed where it can deliver torque to the drive shaft. The axle and the wheels that are revolving at a variety of speeds. When the auto is accelerating from a stop the wheel rotation speed is slow. And so the transmission needs to match a large diameter pulley attached to the engine to a smaller one connected to the drive shaft. On the other hand, when the auto is traveling at a high speed, the engine can revolve at the same or even a smaller rate than the drive shaft. Are there other ways pulleys can be used? Two or more pulleys, on fixed axles, can be connected together with a belt. If the two pulleys are of different diameters, then the one with the smaller diameter will turn faster, and thus it can exert a larger torque. In your automobile one or more pulley and belt systems are used to deliver torques from the engine to the valve crankshaft. The water pump, the air conditioning compressor, and the alternator. Continuously variable automobile transmissions are used in a few modern cars to connect the engine to the drive shaft. 
the torque that can be delivered by an engine depends on the rotational speed. The torque is maximum at an intermediate speed. A transmission is designed to allow the engine to revolve at a speed where it can deliver torque to the drive shaft. The axle, and the wheels that are revolving at a variety of speeds. When the auto is accelerating from a stop the wheel rotation speed is slow. And so the transmission needs to match a large diameter pulley attached to the engine to a smaller one connected to the drive shaft. On the other hand, when the auto is traveling at a high speed. The engine can revolve at the same or even a smaller rate than the drive shaft. Who developed the ideas of conservation of momentum and conservation of energy? Isaac Newton, 1642-1727, Considering Collisions First described momentum as the product of mass and velocity, but he called it the quantity of motion. Energy took 150 years from the first statement of principles until the terminology was worked out. Collisions also inspired the Dutch physicist Christian Huygens, 1629-1695, who wrote that in the collision of two perfectly elastic spheres the sum of what we today call kinetic energy would not be changed by the collision. The German scientist Gottfried Wilhelm Leibniz, 1646-1716, gave the name vis viva in 1695 to kinetic energy. But how could the conservation of vis viva be extended beyond elastic collisions? Finding the answer to this question took over 150 years. An important contribution was made by Benjamin Thompson, 1753 to 1814. Thompson was born in Massachusetts, but because he opposed the American Revolution he left for England and was knighted by King George III and given the title Count Rumford. While in America he spied for the British while in England he spied for the French and was a counter-spy for the British. He moved to Bavaria, now part of Germany, and became Minister of War, among other duties. Because he ran an orphanage and wanted to save money he studied heat and invented many items. Like an efficient stove and a coffee percolator. A long series of experiments led him to conclude in 1798 that thermal energy was nothing more than the vibratory motion of what we know today as the atoms that make up the material. About 20 years before Rumford's work the French scientists Antoine Laurent de Lavoisier 1743-1793 and Pierre-Simon Laplace 1749 to 1827 showed that heat produced by a guinea pig after eating was very close to the heat produced when the food was burned. The development of steam engines by James Watt and others stimulated studies of the relationship between work done and heat produced and how to make engines more efficient. Around 1807 the word energy was used with its modern meaning. In 1842 a German physician, Julius Robert von Meyer, 1814-1878, proposed that all forms of energy are equivalent and that the sum of all forms is conserved. He wrote in general, 
qualitative terms. Although in later essays he included quantitative evidence based on the work done when a gas was heated. But his work resulted in little recognition until the end of his life. About the same time, a British amateur of science, James Prescott Jowell, 1818-1889, began a series of experiments designed to determine the relationship between work done and thermal energy increase that resulted in heat transmitted to the outside. He explored electric generators, the compression of gases, and stirring water. His experiments lasted 18 years. As he continued to publish his results they were taken more and more seriously. The German physicist and physiologist Hermann von Helmholtz, 1821-1894, developed a mathematical description published in 1847 that showed precisely how energy was conserved in many fields including mechanics. Thermal energy and heat, electricity and magnetism, chemistry, and astronomy. With his results the scientific community recognized the great achievement of Rumford. Meyer, Jowell, and others and fully accepted energy conservation. Are other muscles and bones in your body so easily characterized? Most are not because tendons that transmit the force from the muscle to the bone are long and go through several bends. Consider sports equipment like baseball bats, tennis rackets, and golf clubs. They are often used as extensions of your arms. So the person plus the bat or club has to be examined together. But note that in every case the SYS TEM is a third class lever. Where a large distance moved, and therefore greater speed, is favored over an increased force. How is a wheel and axle similar to a lever? What is a wheel and axle? It consists of a disc, the wheel, attached to a thin rod, the axle, so that the two rotate together. Typically the input force is applied to the outer edge of the wheel. And the output force is exerted on something, like a rope, attached to the outer edge of the axle. If the two forces are exerted in the same direction, then it is like a third class lever. If the two are in the opposite direction, for example, a person pushing down on one side of the wheel while a rope is pulled up on the other side, then it is like a first class lever. One may also have the input force exerted on the axle, in which case it is like a second class lever. Both the lever and the wheel and axle are really torque, not force. Multipliers. Recall that if the force is at right angles to the line from the axis of rotation to the point where the force is applied, then the torque is given by FR. How efficient are levers? The only place where friction can occur with a lever is at the pivot point. 
so, as long as friction is minimal there, the lever can approach 100% efficiency. Does the total energy of a system ever change? No. Think about a block of wood on a table. You push it, doing work on the block and transferring energy from your body to the block. The block starts moving, but quickly slows and comes to a stop. What's a what? Suppose you climb the stairs to the second floor. Whether you run or walk, because you have gone up the same distance. The increase in the gravitational field energy will be the same. The difference is the rate at which the energy has changed. The rate, the change in energy divided by the time taken is called power. Power is measured in the unit called the watt. 1 watt, W, is 1 joule, J, per second, S. A kilowatt is 1000 watts or 1000 joules per second. Scottish inventor James Watt came up with the term horsepower, which is equal to 746 watts. The amount of energy it takes an average horse to pull 33,000 pounds of coal one foot in one minute. Automobiles can accelerate from 0 to 60 miles per hour, but the more powerful ones can do it. In 6 seconds or less while ones with less powerful engines may take more than 10 seconds. <laughs>